We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the 12s. 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They'll get this out wide to Metcalf. Sheds off the tackle. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. Play action. It's Smith. Throw out wide to Walker. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. Here's Smith. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. Smith. And a throw there going to be incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. spin on that one it hits at the four and continues into the end zone it's a touchback Miami set to take over two and the Dolphins now with a first and ten at the 20 they'll run here with Raheem Mostert and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. So first and 10 now from the 30. Going to the air, Tugamailoa. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. That one complete down the field to Smith. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. Oftentimes now offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. The throw over the middle taken in. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one goes for 24 yards. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss, 
Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guys at the cornerback position. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And he's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Odell Beckham from eight yards out. And the Dolphins get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And coming out of the end zone, D. Eskridge. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out. They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now Gino on first down. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. Now he's free at the 35. He may go. Tyler Lockett. And all the way in. Touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett. 76 yards. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seam. He found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone, and the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone. seven now as they kick it away. Barrio is going to bring this out of the end zone. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Here comes third and about a foot. Tua going to throw. 
He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On the ground, this is Devon Achim. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 26. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trade in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now, hang on. We got an injured player down there. Oh, boy, that's Odell Beckham Jr., OBJ, who's hurting. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Two yards to go, second down. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. And this is going to be incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers. And ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Mike McDaniel dialing up the risk here a little bit on fourth down. They're going to go for it. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. That's Tua's running back complete. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. That was a pretty good job by the defense, I thought, right? I mean, they had to go to their check down, but still were able to get it done for the first. Agreed. Anytime you can force them to come back to a receiver that's a little bit shorter in the route, you've done your job on defense, but still, they pick up the first down and get a fresh set. Huge fourth down conversion. That one complete to Hill. Just a gain of a couple there. And that will bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second down and eight. Tua sets up to pass it. Touchdown! Braxton Berrios from 13 yards out. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, 
and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes the score 14 to 7. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. To throw on second down is Smith. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And Metcalf going to have the Seahawks first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. And out across midfield, down to the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 45-yard line. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. They'll toss this out right to Walker. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Now Smith, going for Metcalf on the deep ball. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. DK Metcalf, 44 yards. And the Seahawks are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And the running lane's not existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard and it'll set up third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And he is caught. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Now HN on first and 10. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. To an Allen first down. They'll swing this out wide. Here's Achan. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. A gain there of 21 yards. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Looking to pass to him. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Odell Beckham with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Dolphins have broken our tie as they take the lead. Well, just a sensational start for this offense, Charles. Three drives, three passing touchdowns. Is that like mentioning a perfect game in baseball? Or are we cool to do it here in football, partner? No, I think you can do it here in football. I think perfect game in baseball, that, that's its own category. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Could not imagine a worse start for that secondary. Or let's face it, a better one for this offense. No chance they stop passing now the way that it's going. I think they'll continue to press the ball downfield and hopefully reap the same results.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Here's Moore. He will return it. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And out now come the Seahawks. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart, pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Running left is Walker. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. So just three yards on the completion there. And third and eight now. Smith now to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. So touchdowns on their first two drives, but looking like that won't be the case here. Yeah, it looks like someone put their dukes up a little bit, doesn't it? Maybe decided to finally make a stand because those first two drives, they got run over. Now, finally, got their feet under them, got a little bit of balance. They're getting off the field. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Miami's offense set and ready to go. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just want to put it in the hands of our defense and have them win the game? In this case, yeah, not the case. Not at all. You want to put it in the hands of your offense, but you always feel better about saying defense because you think defense is a constant and offense kind of comes and goes. Today, <laughs> this game, no, they need their offense to stay on a really hot level. They've been hot so far. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? On play action, here's Tua. Blitz coming, and down he goes. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. I don't care what level of football you played. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope <laughs> someone would come free. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. Throw caught by Achan. 
And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 18. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good. Solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. Now Tua. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's Smith. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. And again, it's Tunga Bailoa. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return, it's Eskridge, and he'll bring it out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. A shotgun snap for Smith. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. On second and 10, Smith. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 
A gain there of 21 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. The pressure that time right up the middle, and he was able to wiggle in there pretty easily and get the sack. Yeah, sometimes you end up getting caught in a little bit of a breakdown about who to block up front, and that creates the gap there. And he took full advantage, got to the quarterback, and finished off the sack. Complete. Smith has it. So the completion good for just three. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. So here's a third and 14. Here's Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. He completes it to Beckham. Touchdown, Dolphins. Odell Beckham, 29 yards. And the Dolphins take a three-touchdown lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Now Gino. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. And Smith, this throw finds Smith and Jigba. 
And he'll be stopped right at midfield. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Pass is caught. It's Metcalf going across the field here. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Throwing again is Smith. That completes it again to Metcalf. And Metcalf going to have the Seahawks first down as he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Off of play action, here's Smith. Smith and Jigba with a grab. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And that one finds the ground, breaking a string of five straight completions. And it brings up second down. No third, third down. Wave going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long. And you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Now Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 19. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. He finds Smith and Jigba. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Here's Walker. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Ken Walker taking it in from seven yards away. And the Seahawks are able to cut into that deficit. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it and catch it. And he gets it done. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Berrios now from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. Two is taken in by Waddle. 
And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Right back to Jalen Waddle for another catch. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. In motion, Hill. On second down, Moster. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Tyrell Dotson with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Got yeah, the putter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. That's taken on the 25. A 39 yard punt, a return of five. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Now the ball now going back over to the Seattle Seahawks offense. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. We know he has a lot of confidence in his arm and likes to force it downfield, but the coverage was tight there. Fortunate it wasn't picked off. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. Here's Smith. It's caught, block it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. The Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. They'll try for the first with Walker. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape, and that is not going to get it done. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game, and all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. Throw to Eskridge, complete on the out route. And he'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. 
The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Man open downfield, it's Metcalf. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 25 yards that time. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Tackle by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Sticking with Walker on second down. Fights free at the five. And the Seahawks are going to be set up with a first and goal as good running gets him down to about the four-yard line. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four-down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Throwing now is Geno. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. Noah Fant from four yards out. And the Seahawks have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Who is it, Myrick? I can go through his progressions and find the open receiver. I believe we just saw that there. And we admire him just a little bit more when it goes for a touchdown. Myers connects on the PAT. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Miami set to take over. This game is really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side and now you know, they take over here with just a very slim one score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead. They go into coast mode. And all of a sudden, they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here. Otherwise, they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. He was brought down there by Julian Love. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On oh, a jet sweep, here comes Waddle. Oh, this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. But that's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Throwing on first down, but the 
one winds up to be incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Throwing now is Tugabailoa. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the covers because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The Dolphins on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and ten. Looking to pass. to him. He is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this will be taken at the 13. There will be 37 yards there on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air. So now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, Three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. From the 29, here's second and four. Out of the gun, Smith. He completes this to Walker. To give him two yards there on the completion. And now that sets up third and two. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. Well, Gino, meanwhile, tossing complete there to Smith and Jimbo. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Smith. This complete to Rocket. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Walker now on first and 10. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Second down, eight yards to go. 
Smith to throw. Looking middle, and that's complete. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. But just a gigantic play here, both sides. This is third and inches. Smith's going to throw it. He finds Smith and Jigba in the end zone for a Seahawks touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch tomorrow. This crowd alive again. Some were headed for the exits, but a fourth quarter comeback has tied things up as the kick is away here. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does... And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Miami's offense set and ready to go. They are in field goal range here already. How do you handle this situation, tie game? In a perfect scenario, you want to find a way to get the ball to the proper spot for your field goal kicker. They always have preferences. And you want to bleed the clock down so that when you do kick it, as the ball's going through the post, zeros. the clock hits zeros. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Now second and four. Throwing to a second down. Here's Mostert again. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four. No tougher place to be in a spot like this than Seattle. Here's third down. Now Tua on third down. Here comes Mostert, and he is going to have the Dolphins first down. At least it appears that way, and he got it by maybe the length of a football. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. All three timeouts remain. How much that'll matter remains to be seen. It's first and ten. And with the play clock at five, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So it all rests now on the right foot of Jason Sanders. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is right there. It's good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. 
So he's able to come through in a hostile environment, and you'd have to imagine that's the game winner. Yeah, how about that? And the way that this game's gone, you think they really wanted to get to overtime and take their chances there? They wanted to get this thing done. When you're the visitor, you don't want to play into overtime. You want to knock it down, get it done, and go home. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Now on the return, oh no, the ball is loose. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And say what you want about Lumen Field here in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league when you're on the road. It's very hard. The fan support, off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand 